he sees that believers in his village haven't heard the words of the returned Lord. He wants to tell everyone the incredible news of the Lord's return. But he is awash in misgivings and concerns. What sort of roadblocks does he encounter? Where does he find the strength to keep sharing the gospel and bearing witness to God? My entire family was Catholic, and so were most of the other villagers there. But since the Catholic church in our village didn't have a priest in it, for a long time, no one went to study the Bible at church. Hmm. Then, on May 22nd, 2020, I read Almighty God's words online. Through reading God's words, I knew that the Lord Jesus has returned, that He's Christ of the last days, Almighty God. And I accepted Almighty God's work of the last days. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Yes, thank God. <laughs> Later on, I read this in Almighty God's words. Since man has faith, he must closely follow each of God's steps, and he should follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Only these people seek the true way and know the Holy Spirit's work. Amen. Amen. I knew that as believers we should know God's work and follow God's footsteps. There were so many believers in the village, and none of them had heard God's voice or welcomed the returned Lord Jesus. So I really wanted to share the incredible news of the Lord's return. Mm. But I felt a little afraid. I felt like I was young and didn't know how to share the gospel, so they definitely wouldn't listen to me. I was worried they'd look down on me and say, You're so young. Why are you preaching instead of going to school or getting a job? Besides, they'd been believers for years. So would they listen to my testimony of the Lord's return? How would they treat me? How could I fellowship to resolve any notions or confusions they might have? What if they opposed me believing in Almighty God and sharing the gospel? One is bound to have concerns when facing all those unknowns. Mm -hmm. That's True. right. I gave it a lot of thought. But I knew that spreading the gospel was God's will. I had to share the gospel and testify. So I began to pray to God and strengthened my confidence by reading Almighty God's words. I read this in His words. Are you aware of the burden on your shoulders, your commission, and your responsibility? Where is your sense of historic mission? How will you adequately serve as a master in the next age? Do you possess a strong sense of masterhood? How would you explain the master of all things? Is it really the master of all living creatures and of all physical things in the world? What plans do you have for the progress of the next phase of the work? How many people are waiting for you to be their shepherd? Is your task a heavy one? They are poor, pitiable, blind, and at a loss, wailing in the darkness, where is the way? How they yearn for the light like a shooting star to suddenly descend and dispel the dark forces that have oppressed man for years. Who knows just how much they anxiously hope day and night for this. Even on a day when light flashes past, these deeply suffering people remain imprisoned in a dark dungeon without hope of release. When will they weep no longer? Terrible is the misfortune of these fragile spirits who have never been granted rest, and long have they been kept bound in this state by merciless bonds and frozen history. And who has heard the sound of their wailing? Who has witnessed their misery? Has it ever occurred to you how grieved and anxious God's heart is? How can he bear to see innocent man, created by his own hands, suffering such torment? Human beings, after all, are the victims who have been poisoned. And although man has survived to this day, 
Who knows that they have long been poisoned by the evil one? Have you forgotten that you are one of these victims? Are you not willing to strive out of your love for God to save these survivors? Are you not willing to devote all of your energy to repaying God who loves mankind like his own flesh and blood? When all is said and done, how would you interpret being used by God to live your exceptional life? Do you really have the resolve and confidence to live the meaningful life of a pious God-serving person? Amen. Um, amen. I learned that sharing the gospel is our duty. Many people still haven't heard God's voice and are unaware that the Lord's returned and is doing the work of judgment. Mm -hmm. They're still living in the misery of Satan's corruption. God hopes that all of us can consider his will, stand up and cooperate. Exactly. Yes. No matter what issues or difficulties, we should pray and lean on God more and do everything we can to spread the kingdom gospel. That's right. Yes. But I didn't understand God's will. I felt that being so young, I couldn't share the gospel. I was afraid the villagers wouldn't listen and would look down on me. So I was stuck in the difficulties of my own imaginings. I only thought about my own hardships without considering God's will. And I didn't think to pray and lean on God through these struggles to do my duty and take responsibility. Mm. When I thought about how many people were longing for the Lord's return, I felt an urgency. I resolved to do everything I could to bear testimony to God's gospel of the last days, to put all my time and energy into the work of the gospel. Thank Thanks God. Be Thank God. God's words give us faith and strength. They, they do. Really yes. Do. After that, I started making plans to share the gospel with them. First, I went to the copy shop to print some invitations for 10 families to hear a sermon at my house. <sighs> they were all pretty surprised and had nice things to say about it. Thank okay. God. Thank God. I was so happy. After that, I thought that if many people came with just my little cell phone, it would be hard to read God's words while listening to the sermon. Mm. Mm. So I went and asked a friend of mine to borrow his laptop. That evening, 13 people came to listen, and everyone liked reading God's words in the gathering. Whoever wanted to read would stand up and volunteer. Mm. Everyone was really happy after the gathering. They said God's words were wonderful and felt nurturing, and it was great to gather and read God's words. Thank great. God. They also wanted to bring their family members over the next day. Thank God. Thank God. Seeing how everyone longed for God's words made me really happy. But always borrowing my friend's laptop wasn't viable, so I wanted to buy one of my own. But when I put together all my money, it still wasn't enough to purchase one. I didn't know what to do. After asking around, I learned that projectors are cheaper than computers are. So I decided to take out a loan to buy a projector so that the other villagers could read God's words that way. Mm. I went to the town and took out a loan so I could buy a projector. Mm -hmm. I got everything set up before starting the next gathering. Uh. Not before long, the villagers started showing up. 19 people attended, filling up the entire room. Thank God. In that moment, I knew God arranged that, and I was excited. I rushed to find a speaker so they could listen to God's words. I fellowshiped on how the prophecies of the Lord's return have been fulfilled, and how to be sure that he has returned, and that God has come to expose every type of person. Everyone there was enthusiastically participating in reading God's words. Even the kids were excited to read God's words. Uh -huh. Seeing how much they thirsted for the words of God, I knew this was all God's work. Mm -hmm. Some people lingered after the gathering, and they said they really enjoyed it. The village head and the other villagers were very moved, and the village head even wanted all the locals to hear God's words. I was so surprised. This outcome totally shot down my notions and imaginings. I felt ashamed. 
I truly witnessed God's work and guidance and gained more faith to share the gospel. Thank God. Thanks be to God. I invited villagers every single day after that, and more and more people began showing up. They were all so thrilled, saying, I've never read anything like this before. God has become flesh and returned, and we can come face to face with him. We're so lucky to be able to welcome the Lord. <sighs> Thanks Amen. be to God. It's true that God's sheep hear his voice. Yes, it is. absolutely. They also planned an event to invite more people from surrounding towns to a gathering. Wow. Oh. They told me, you're so young, but you're doing this for the villagers, helping us hear and understand God's words and being so thorough about it. No one's ever done something like this. We never thought a young person like you would do this. It's wonderful. Thank Thanks God. be to God. I knew this was entirely God's deeds, which excited me and strengthened my faith. Amen. 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 But I ran into all sorts of difficulties when watering these new believers. Sometimes the network wasn't great, so I had to go door to door to fellowship. What was worse was we'd get a lot of rain there. And when it rained, the roads would be muddy and hard to walk on. When I went out for watering, I'd be dashing from one house to another. Sometimes I rushed to a new believer's house before it started raining, and I had to wait because they hadn't arrived yet. Then when I finished fellowshipping with them, the road home was in bad shape. I'd feel negative and weak because of this, so I'd pray and read God's words. Then I read this in Almighty God's words. Do not be discouraged, do not be weak, and I will reveal things to you. The road to the kingdom is not so smooth. Nothing is that simple. You want blessings to come to you easily, do you not? Today, everyone will have bitter trials to face. Without such trials, your love for me will not grow stronger, and you will not truly love me. Even if these trials are minor, everyone must pass through them. It's just that their difficulty will vary. Trials are a blessing from me. And how many of you often come to me and beg for my blessings? Silly children. You always think that a few auspicious words count as my blessing, yet you do not recognize that bitterness is one of my blessings. When you are faced with suffering, lay aside concern for the flesh and do not complain about God. No matter what your actual stature is, you must first possess both the will to suffer hardship and show true faith, and you must also have the will to forsake the flesh. You should be willing to suffer hardships and losses to your own interests in order to satisfy God's will, and also capable of regretting yourself. In the past, you were unable to satisfy God, and now you can regret yourself. You must not be lacking in any of these. It is through these things that God will perfect you. If you cannot meet these criteria, then you cannot be perfected. Amen. 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 God's words encouraged me not to lose heart or become weak, that God would guide and help me. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd experienced some physical discomfort and paid a bit of a price to share the gospel, but it was meaningful and valuable, the most righteous thing to do, and what would most gain God's approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought of Peter and the other apostles of the Lord Jesus, who suffered a lot to spread the gospel, and some even died in their efforts to share it. But they stayed strong in sharing God's gospel and never backed down. Compared to them, what little I'd suffered wasn't even worth mentioning. Having accepted God's work of the last days and being able to do my duty to spread the kingdom gospel was God's elevation and grace. Yes, absolutely. Right. I couldn't keep considering my own flesh or avoid hardships. I had to be willing to suffer. I couldn't become discouraged under any circumstance. Even if I suffered, I had to bear testimony to God's work and do my duty to satisfy God. Thank Thanks God. be to God. No matter how much we have to suffer, we have to do our duty well and satisfy God. Exactly. Yes. At one point I became sick and had a cold. In the evenings I had a fever, a headache, and a stomachache. I couldn't even talk. 
A sister saw me and told me, You shouldn't go to tonight's gathering. I agreed at the time. But the thought of new believers gathering by themselves left me uneasy. I was thinking that feeling unwell was a test for me, and I still had to do my duty. I remembered the time when I had an injured leg, but I'd still go play soccer. <laughs> so now why couldn't I do my duty? <laughs> That's exactly. true. At this thought, I went to the gathering by my motorcycle. Uh -huh. Surprisingly, when I arrived, I didn't feel as unwell. I was really happy. Nice. And I got better a few days later. Oh, thanks, thanks be God. To God. Later on, after over a month of hard work, most of the villagers, aside from those working out of town, had accepted Almighty God's gospel of the last days. Oh, thanks be to God. Thank God. Oh, that was God's guidance and blessing. Absolutely. It was. <laughs> Later on, I thought, though I had shared the gospel with all the villagers, that still wasn't enough to meet God's will. I wanted more people to hear God's voice. Because many people still don't know the Lord Jesus has returned and is expressing truths and doing the work of cleansing mankind. So I decided to share the gospel in other villages. Mm. I began to pray in my heart. Almighty God, please guide me so that I don't lose faith and can keep moving forward. I'm confident that you'll help me resolve whatever difficulties. Amen. 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 After that, I went to a neighboring village to share the gospel. Did that go well? I walked downhill down a muddy road for 30 minutes to preach the gospel. But at first, all said they didn't have time and turned me away. I felt really disappointed and kind of discouraged. Hmm. I arrived home really late that night. Sister Annie called me to ask how it all went. And she fellowshiped with me to encourage me. Here's what I read in Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, What I desire is your loyalty and obedience now, your love and testimony now. Even if you do not know at this moment what testimony is or what love is, you should bring to me your all and turn over to me the only treasures you have, your loyalty and obedience. You should know that the testimony to my defeat of Satan lies within the loyalty and obedience of man, as does the testimony to my complete conquest of man. The duty of your faith in me is to bear witness to me, to be loyal to me and none other, and to be obedient to the end. Before I begin the next step of my work, how will you bear witness to me? How will you be loyal and obedient to me? Do you devote all your loyalty to your function? Or will you simply give up? Would you rather submit to my every arrangement, even if it be death or destruction, or flee midway to avoid my chastisement? I chastise you so that you will bear witness to me and be loyal and obedient to me. What's more, the chastisement at present is to unfold the next step of my work and to allow the work to progress unimpeded. Hence, I exhort you to be wise and treat neither your life nor the significance of your existence as worthless sand. Can you know exactly what my work to come will be? Do you know how I will work in the days to come? and how my work will unfold. You should know the significance of your experience of my work, and furthermore, the significance of your faith in me. I have done so much. How could I give up halfway, as you imagine? 
I have done such extensive work. How could I destroy it? Indeed, I have come to bring this age to an end. This is true, but moreover, you must know that I am to begin a new age, to begin new work, and most of all, to spread the gospel of the kingdom. So you should know that the present work is only to begin an age and to lay the foundation for spreading the gospel in the time to come and bringing the age to an end in the future. My work is not so simple as you think, nor is it as worthless or meaningless as you may believe. Therefore, I still must say to you, you ought to give your life to my work. And moreover, you ought to devote yourself to my glory. Long have I yearned for you to bear witness to me, and even longer have I yearned for you to spread my gospel. You ought to understand what is in my heart. Amen. Amen. Reading this in God's words gave me some strength. I felt like God was telling me that I should have faith in Him. And no matter what difficulties, I couldn't be weak or get discouraged mm -hmm. because God is guiding us. He is. Exactly. As long as I was considerate of God's will and spread His kingdom gospel, He would surely open up a path for me. That's yes. right. Through God's words I saw that the path of sharing the gospel isn't easy, but it requires suffering and paying a price. Mm -hmm. Noah preached the gospel for 120 years, and he was mocked, slandered, and maligned by people. He suffered so much, and though he wasn't able to convert anyone, he still didn't give up or become weak. He kept sharing the gospel. Noah was strong in his devotion and submission to God. He tried his utmost to complete his duty as a created being and gained God's approval and blessings. Mm. Yes. When God sent the flood to destroy the world, Noah's family of eight were saved by God. They survived. Mm. Then thinking of me, I just shared the gospel with three families and I lost heart when they didn't accept it. I didn't have genuine faith in God. And in fact, God had allowed this situation and difficulty to come to perfect my faith and my devotion to God. Mm. So whether they accepted the gospel or not, I had to go preach the gospel. That was my duty. Amen. 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 Your fellowship is really inspiring. Same. In the past, I felt really disheartened when I encountered difficulties. Mm -hmm. My faith in God was obviously lacking. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I also see that the hardships and setbacks we face in our duty are a good thing, and that relying on God to get through them can help us strengthen our faith. Yes. Correct. Thanks be to God. God's words gave me strength. After that, I went to another village to share the gospel. I also said a prayer, asking Almighty God to enlighten the potential gospel recipients. That evening, I found someone interested in the gospel. And what's more, I kept finding others willing to hear the gospel and converted six people that night. Oh, thank thanks God. be to God. I was so surprised because some gospel recipients were Catholics and had lots of notions, but they understood after I fellowshiped on God's words with them and accepted Almighty God's gospel of the last days. Thanks thank be God. To God. I went to another place after that, and when I'd go to share the gospel, I'd pray asking God to guide me so that I would know how to preach and bear witness to God's words. Mm -hmm. As more and more people accepted God's gospel, my confidence continued to grow. Though sometimes when I went to other villages to preach to strangers, I would feel a little shy and even scared. The guidance of God's words gave me confidence and the courage to face it. Mm. I knew I had to fellowship with them, that it was my duty. Yes. And if I didn't share the gospel, I wouldn't have more chances to practice, and I wouldn't learn and gain more truths. Mm -hmm, that's true. After that, by constantly sharing the gospel, I stopped being so nervous and came to understand the truth of visions more clearly. I felt really relaxed and free. 
Thanks, Thank God. God. I really gained so much through sharing the gospel. If I hadn't experienced all of this, there's no way I could have understood God's almighty rule, and I couldn't have learned the importance of doing my duty or how to seek God through hardship. Thank, Thank God. God. Your experience is so good.